In examining Ruth, it's essential to discuss one difficulty before we begin, the earlier prohibition against Moabites. No Ammonite or Moabite or any of their descendants may enter into the assembly of the Lord, not even in the tenth generation. Note that the prohibition doesn't mention marriage. According to the genealogies in Ruth, Matthew and Luke, Boaz was the 11th generation after Abraham. Prohibitions against marrying foreigners were not racial segregation, but religious. Many neighboring tribes were of the same ethnicity. Ruth had chosen Israel's God, and he gave her redemption from her ancestors' sins and her poverty. Was faith an important part of Ruth's life? But Ruth said, Don't urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I'll go, and where you lodge, I'll lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God my God. Where you die, I'll die, and there I'll be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. Was acknowledging God part of Boaz's and the harvester's conversation? Just then Boaz arrived from Bethlehem. He said to the harvesters, May the Lord be with you. And they said to him, May the Lord bless you. Work for welfare was part of God's law, and so Ruth was permitted to go behind the harvesters to glean any leftovers. What did the foreman tell Boaz? She asked if she could pick up grain left by the harvest workers, and she's been working all morning without a moment's rest. Is there an indication that Boaz was much older than Ruth? Then Boaz said to Ruth, Listen carefully, my daughter. Don't go to glean in another field. Furthermore, don't go on from this one, but join my young women here. Her dedication to her mother-in-law really impressed Boaz. He warned the young men not to treat her roughly, allowed her to drink from his well, share meals with his workers, and even bring food home to Naomi. What else did he say to Ruth? Boaz answered her, Everything you've done for your mother-in-law since your husband's death has been fully reported to me. How you left your father and mother in the land of your birth and how you came to a people you didn't previously know. May the Lord reward you for what you've done, and may you receive a full reward from the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you've come for refuge. Did Naomi acknowledge God in her reply to Ruth's report? Then Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, May he be blessed by the Lord, who has not forsaken his kindness to the living or the dead. Naomi continued, the man's a close relative. He's one of our family redeemers. A family or kinsman redeemer was a close relative who had the legal right to inherit land that would pass out of family hands due to the deaths of inheritors. Land was originally divided according to tribe and would ideally stay within the family and tribe. Naomi would die childless. How did Naomi suggest that Ruth propose marriage to Boaz? Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you're there until he's finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he's lying. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He'll tell you what to do. What was Boaz's response to this proposal? The Lord bless you, my daughter, Boaz exclaimed. You're showing even more family loyalty now than you did before, for you've not gone after a younger man, whether rich or poor. Now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I'll do what's necessary for everyone in town knows you are a virtuous woman. But while it's true that I'm one of your family redeemers, there's another man who's more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight, and in the morning I'll talk to him. If he's willing to redeem you, very well. Let him marry you. But if he's not willing, then as surely as the Lord lives, I'll redeem you myself. Now lie down here until morning. 
How discreet were Boaz and Ruth? Ruth lay down again, but she got up before daylight, because Boaz didn't want anyone to know she'd been there. According to the inheritance laws of the time, another closer relative had a prior right to redeem the land. So Boaz went before witnesses to negotiate. When Boaz said it involved marrying Ruth, the man declined. There were no more barriers to the marriage of Boaz and Ruth. What did Boaz say? Then Boaz said to the elders and to the crowd standing around, Your witnesses that today I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilian and Marlon, and with the land I've acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Marlon, to be my wife. This way she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here in his hometown. You're all witnesses today. Did the people bless Boaz and Ruth? Then all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, We're witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house, like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you act worthily in Ephratah and be renowned in Bethlehem. Were they married? So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. He was intimate with her. The Lord let her become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. Was Ruth thus blessed to be an ancestor of David? Boaz begat Obed, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. As Boaz redeemed the land for Naomi and Ruth, so Jesus has redeemed us, not with money, but with his own blood. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation or conduct, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. Thus Boaz became a figure of Christ, our Redeemer.